So let's move on to something new with vectors then. So I've so far talked about vectors. Can anybody remind me actually, what is the definition of a vector? Do you remember there were three definitions which I gave you? Can you give me any one of the three? A distance from two points, I would tweak one word in that definition, because it's not a distance. A movement. A movement, perfect. So it's a movement from one point to another. And you remember, it doesn't matter how we get between those two points, as long as we get between one point and another. We start at one point, we finish at another. It doesn't matter how we get between those two points. Good. A starting point and a destination. All right. Now... For convenience, and just for the sake of notation and ease of looking at things, we're just going to use a straight line to represent a vector. All right? So, um, good. Can anybody remember any of the other two definitions? Because there were three. So the one which we're going to use is the geometric definition, which is a movement from one point to another. What were the other two definitions? Can anybody remember? A Absolutely right. So a physics perspective of what a vector is, is, it's just a quantity which has a magnitude, remember that's a fancy word for size, and a direction associated with it. Okay. So can anybody give me an example of a quantity which has a magnitude and a direction? Velocity, okay, which remember is just a fancy word for speed because it's speed in a known direction. Okay. What would speed be an example of? If, if velocity is an example of a vector, what is speed an example of? Can anybody, can anybody remember the word? Mm. Begins with an S. Scalar. scalar. Good. Yeah, exactly. So if it just has a size, we call that a scalar. Good. The computing definition, can anybody remember? A list of a list of numbers, okay? So it's just a list of numbers, right? But we're going to look at it from the perspective of a geometry, which is just a movement from one point to another. And you remember that on Monday we broke this down into thinking about it in terms of its components, namely its left and right position and its up and down position, okay? So uh, let's say that this is three across and four up, and let's call this vector A. Okay, so let's call this vector A. So I would write A, there's a couple of ways I can write it. Can anybody give me one way of writing this? For, uh, three I and four J. Good, 3i plus 4j. What's the other way of writing this? Okay. Columns, good. So what goes on top and what goes on bottom? Yeah, good. The horizontal and then the vertical underneath. Is that okay? So there's two ways of representing this vector. Now today I want to talk about what else I can do with this vector. So namely, let's say that this was position uh, P, and let's say this was position Q, okay? What if I wanted to talk about the length of that vector? Like, how far is that direct movement between P and Q? So just the straight line movement between P and Q. What is that straight line movement like, between Q? Yeah. Good, exactly. So you've seen here that this is just a right angle triangle because these two components are perpendicular to each other. They are at right angles to each other. So it's just a right angle triangle which I've made, which means that if I want to find this length here, like how far is that green line, how far is that green vector, then I can just use Pythagoras. Perfect. So just remind me, how do I find the length of the hypotenuse in a right angle triangle. So how do I find? Uh, a square equals uh, four squared plus three squared. Yeah, yeah, good. So basically what I'm saying here is if I take this side and I square it, and if I add it to this side and I square it, and then that should be equal to whatever the length of this is squared. So would you be happy to calculate the length of that? I would just have to square root the entire thing, like do it all in one fell swoop, okay? Now I want a bit of notation on this. If I've called this A, if I've called this A, and I want to find the length of it, the way which I write that is I take my vector A, remember I underline my vectors to show it's a vector, okay? And I put 
a modulus sign, each side of it. Okay? Now sometimes, just through habit, I tend to put two if it's a vector. Okay? Uh, that's just purely notation. It doesn't matter whether you put one or whether you put two. Okay? But all this means, all this means, is it's just the length of my vector. Okay, so it's the length of A, uh, of A. Is that okay? So in this case, what is the length of A? What is 3 squared plus 4 squared square rooted? 5. five. Yeah, exactly, because 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, add them together, you get 25, square root it. Yes, uh, this triangle has a name, yes? 3, 4, 5. Right, good. Well, uh, it also has a six, so Good, so this is something called a Pythagorean triple. Okay, it's basically what happens if you take three of these sides of my right angle triangle and they are all integers, so they are all whole numbers. So three, four, and five are nice, it's a Pythagorean triple because they are all integers. Can anybody think of any other Pythagorean triples? Yeah, it's, it's six, six, eight, 12, yeah. Okay, six, eight, twelve, let's check it. Does six squared plus eight squared make twelve squared? 6 squared is 36, yeah, yeah. 8 squared is 64. 64, add them together you get not 12, not 12. 10, yeah. 10 squared, exactly, you get 100, okay, so 6, 8, 10 is another example of a Pythagorean triple, okay. There are an infinite number of them, but in general, usually a squared plus b squared does not make uh, a nice integer number, okay, not make a nice integer number squared. Okay, so are you happy that what I'm doing here, I can use Pythagoras to find the length of a vector, to find the length of a vector, right? So could you have a go if I give you that b is equal to 6, negative 2, could you have a go at find the length of b? Could you have a go at find the length of b? 